What's up guys, we are here with uh, Mr. Nate Fenton and uh, we are gonna break down a rear L cam that uh, Jacob and Samong just killed here in the west side of Washington State. And uh, Nate, why don't you introduce yourself, give us a little bit of background. Uh, do you cut a little bit every once in a while? A little bit, every now and then when I'm not hunting or fishing. <laughs> I've been butchering for 24 years, so I've been doing it a little while. Know my thing, know a thing or two about it. I don't do a lot of breaking, but I do a fair amount. So. Just bear with me as I learn as I go, but we will uh, tear apart a couple elk hind quarters and shoulders and, All right. and uh, see how they turn out. Uh, without further ado, we are going to get Mr. Samung's hind quarter from his elk on the table. We're going to start breaking it down, so enjoy uh, a master at his craft. hind quarter of an elk they going just I'm gonna start seaming it out showing you what you got I'm gonna start right here by pulling the top or the bottom round off of the knuckle just follow mother nature's lines always cutting away from you Off of the eye, just like that. There you got your whole bottom round. You got your your rump portion. So then I'm gonna come in here again and start pulling the rest of this apart. Take the eye of the round out first. Since on an elk, it's big enough to go on its own. I'm going to take the inside out. This is also known as a top round. If you were cutting or going to the grocery store, I'm going to bone out the rest of the, the round. Pull the sirloin tip and the top sirloin off. And there you got your shank. Chris, Dave, Mike, they all make pizza. They all make food. They all have their own restaurant. So, John, 
Top sirloin. And I just showed these guys earlier today how yummy a tri-tip is. And then the rest of this is your knuckle. So here you got roast steaks. You can do chops, but I prefer roast. This guy here will clean this up, turn that all into uh, just barbecue. Top sirloin, clean that up. That can go on the grill. And then you got your bottom right here, which will make roasts, cube steaks, stew meat, grind. You got your top round, which you can do London broils. You can do roasts, cube steaks, stew, grind. And then your eye of the round makes a good little roast. It's lean, so you gotta be careful how you cook it. Don't overcook it, but that'll turn out really good too. What I do... You got cuber, mate? Hmm? A cuber? A cuber? You want me to cube some? That's my favorite one to cube. Yeah. Oh yeah. That mm -hmm. one's by far. Absolutely beautiful. So on this one, all I'm going to do is pull that little knuckle joint out. Because that gets kind of tough, even if you grind it up. Pull some of that stuff out and the rest of this stuff here will just go into the trim pile. This I would just throw out. Then approximately, how, what size did you want these things? I'll let you be in charge. I'll pack whatever. So if you were to go and make any kind of chops or steaks, this is a good one to do it. This is what we call the silver side of the sirloin tip. So this is more of a solid muscle versus that side. That side of the tip is two seams and it makes a better roast. But I was instructed to keep this thing as more or less whole muscle. That way they can just process it after the fact how they wish. Try tip up. This guy's really good. You just gotta clean these glands off. The glands turn kind of sour on you. This is me. Since this is gonna be a barbecue type cut. I'm probably a little on the picky side, but I would pull all that silver stuff off. It'll go fine in the grind. But personally, I don't want it on a roast. And like, there's a another one of those glands. Get rid of that. 
And you also got to take this little silver muscle off on a tri-tip. It has a tendency to be a little on the chewy side. This little one off there too. And then just look for your dry meat. You gotta shave off the other side. sirloin. Just going to clean this bad boy up a little bit extra because this one's going to go on a grill. I don't want to leave any of that stuff on there if it's on the barbecue. thing in bigger chunks or do you want this thing in? This is your top sirloin. Maybe just half. Half it? <laughs> nice top sirloin. This guy here is naturally a little bit tougher just because it's so lean even on beef but on a milk it's especially lean. So what we will do is we will clean this thing up extra good and am I instructed for a roast on this or do you want this thing set up for cube steaks? Uh, we'll, do a, we'll do a roast on that one. Okay. A little bit of silver off. Onto the bottom. This guy right here is another one that'll make a good roast. It'll make decent steaks as long as you cook it slower or chicken fry them, whatever. This one has a little bit of bone salt on it. Yank that off, that's really no good. Super tough. properly you end up with the silver seam 
that's going to basically be like chewing on a rubber band, so that's got to come off. In my opinion, it's not even worth grinding it. So what I'll do, just take it, peel that off, and then fillet the last little bit of meat that I missed off, so I just throw away the band. bottom round you have a muscle that goes right through like that so you ideally you want to take this tendon out as well pull that off so now you just got one solid piece of meat that we got to clean up Got a nice lean bottom round. Last little piece out of there. The audio. The bad dog's starting to talk out. There. I know. Starting to bark. See what you do, Dave. What's that? Yeah. See what you do with your your <clears throat> alcohol, ruining the lives of. You know, I think if I'm off the sorry, but there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. To eat your own. I I like your I like your alcohols. Okay, what we got going on? We're we're, messing we're up still the video here. We're still cleaning up the bottom right here. Okay. Finishing this guy up. This one here. Just leave it like this. This is the rump portion, but it's pretty tapered, so if it was me, I would just go and like turn it into chicken it like, fried or something like that. Just like that. Okay. Hey. Hey, what's this? That's some long steps. Huh? You, oh, that's, what is it? that's some long I don't know. I think it might be stuff off of this one. Let's, let's keep it separate because that's all that's all mine. That's his little stack and this is all his stack. So. Alright, clean up the last little bit of the bottom. This is pretty much all all gonna be cubed, stewed, grind. That thing out of there. Hey Dave. Yes. Sir. I don't want to feel like you're not. Chris, kind of pink. You're not. You don't want to feel like you're not. Take a break. Take a break. Jake. I know. I, I'm not trying. I'm trying not to be. I don't want to be rude. I just. Well, I don't want to piss Nate off because I think he's bigger. If if we're recording, we might as well record. You know what I mean? Just got me working. I already told you next year. I'm down, man. Might as well break you in, right? Break you in on a king. Heck yeah. 
Have you caught a king before? I've never caught a salmon besides kokanee. Do you want to go catch oh. salmon, dude? I'll go look up a fish. Besides yeah. kokanee, that's a trout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to catch? That's a land. Line. I oh, know. I told him we'll just go catch There's a king a next year. That's a blue deal. Yeah. We'll start him off with a 20 pound king out of Puget Sound. Yeah, that'd be cool. That or we could just go break in on the Columbia River. Yeah, I don't know. Do, do some springers? Go watch a, do we a herring do bite. Dude, just break, just uh, break me in some way. <laughs>